Today's lesson is talking about trusts and trusts within the context of estate planning. That's what I do as I'm an estate planner, among other things, and within retirement planning. And today we're going to be talking about the revocable living trust, just lightly. We're not going to go into real depth. And the reason we're talking about this one is these are marketed widely. I mean, my guess is, is you get some things in the mail, you know, it's a three or four page circ circular, there's seminar opportunities, there's people out hawking these things and selling them to clients um, as like one size fits all. And really a lot of it has to do with avoiding probate or keeping your, uh, your assets out of the public eye and keeping them out of the costs and delays of probate, of going to attorneys and all that kind of stuff. But let's just talk about it a little bit. The revocable living trust. And so the word revocable means that you can change it or alter it or even cancel it during your lifetime. So this is the, this is the word that they use to uh, reduce the value of, of the trust or to reduce the risk in using the trust is like, go ahead and set one of these up, and then if you want to revoke it, you can. So, which is true. Living means, a revocable living trust means that you're going to do the living part is while you're alive. This exists while you're alive. And the trust part, it's a legal entity. It's separate from you that is going to go on beyond your lifetime. It's going to be in effect during your lifetime, and it's going to hold assets but it's going to go on after your lifetime and perhaps just distribute assets after that. So revocable living trust. But when we're talking about trusts in general, I'm going to work from the bottom up here. And I'm going to talk about, to me as an estate planner, when I have somebody coming to me and they say, I want a trust. I need a trust. Set me up a trust. Well, first of all, I can't do that because I'm not an attorney. I'm a CFP and an estate planner. We have an attorney that we're associated with who, if somebody really wants one of these things, we're going to set it up for them. But when I come into the picture, the first question I ask is, what's the purpose of the trust? What are we trying to accomplish? Because I, I don't, a lot of folks just want a trust because they've heard that they need one. And so I'm going to need a clear purpose. And one of those purposes might be to just avoid probate, like we were talking about in the beginning. Another purpose would be that if you are concerned about your heirs, perhaps your adult children, and being irresponsible with the money you've worked so hard to accumulate, and they're going to go out and blow it all, or perhaps you have a special needs person that's going to have to be cared for, and they're not capable of managing the money, those types of things. So as long as there's a, a clear purpose, I'm all for it. Now, trusts are costly, and they can create hassles so that if you were going with a revocable living trust and you're going to put all your assets in there and it's going to serve a purpose, it also can be a hassle for you during your lifetime and specifically for your heirs after lifetime is because you set up the trust to limit what people do with your money and make sure it's just not all distributed. Well, after you pass away, then the beneficiaries of the trust are going to have to go to the trustee and get them to approve whatever it is they want to do. So there, there's downsides to these things. And when we talk about avoiding probate, okay, there's lots of reasons to do that. I mean, when, when your assets go through probate in the probate court, um, first of all, there's delays. It can be expensive as well. Um, and so, and it's in the public eye. I mean, it, people are going to be able, if they want to look far enough, they're going to be able to see what you had, what you did with it, all that stuff's in the public, whereas a trust is going to keep it out of there. So I don't want to talk negatively about these at all, because as long as there's a clear purpose for it, then I think we do it, as long as you understand the costs and the, the, the other sides of it. Now, I will talk negatively about people marketing trusts like they're the greatest things since sliced bread and everybody needs one and they all kind of need the same one. That I will talk negatively about. So trusts can serve a great purpose. Many of the things that they do in their purpose, they can be accomplished another way for less money, like in beneficiary designations and life insurance, IRAs, that sort of thing. I'm Hans Scheil and I thank you for listening.